you know, that's, that's my point mainly. And then the second point is, I think we could be looking at the um, dissolution of uh, our part in Europe because of this, you know, on the Human Rights Act. Okay, um, and uh, Stephen in London, your point. Yeah, it's, it's, isn't it ironic, uh, Nicky, that we've got somebody in Wandsworth, Nick, at the moment um, that that's, that's, um, believes in uh, speaking out against Islamic extremism? Obviously, Tommy Robinson, I'm sure you're aware of that. Well, the, 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 the English Defence League guy. Yeah, that's huh? right. And you've got yeah. someone like Abu Qatada, who, whose, whose sermons of his videos were found in, the, in a Hamburg flat of, of the 9-11 hijackers, Mohammed Atta. I mean, we are the laughing stock of the world. And do you know what? I don't care that if evidence was obtained by torture, because we all know he's guilty, and I'm just hoping... You don't care. We, I don't but care. Don't we, a, don't we have to subscribe to no, the highest no, standards? No, we know he's guilty, Nicky. We know he's guilty. His, 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 his videos were found in the 9-11 flats of these people uh, in Hamburg. He's linked to these Algerian groups. I mean, the, the guy just taking the mickey out of us, and we are the laughing stock, and um, I'm just hoping that, that, we, that we've got the, the guts to just... just and that, that, that human rights lie, do not get me talking to him, because I would just lose well, it. Let's, let's hear from Benjamin Ward. When you, well, hear, when, you hear, when you hear reactions like that, when you hear um, emotions like that, Benjamin Ward, and, uh, and Tommy Robinson being hailed as a, as a kind of hero, what do you say, Benjamin? Oh. Well, look, this is a very difficult case, and, and I think no one would dispute that. And it's, it is, I think no, also no one would dispute it's gone on for far too long. But the fact is that this man, uh, if he is, uh, uh, has done the things that the British government and Jordanian government says he's done, should be put on trial in this country where he can get a fair trial. And it's pretty remarkable that he's been in custody, in British custody, for nine years, and during that whole time, uh, no evidence has been put forward that's actually sufficient to charge him. So absolutely, he should be prosecuted. We believe that, that terrorism should be prosecuted as a crime. Terrorists are criminals, and they should be, be prosecuted in a way that respects basic principles of British justice, which means the right to a fair trial and the right not to use tortured evidence. Darren, do you want to come in here? Yeah, I was just uh, referring to, to your intro before seeing it at, uh... An irony is that uh, we chased people like Starbucks the other day for the um, for the legal um, uh, uh, non-paying of taxes uh, with the way that they distribute their monies around the world globally. Um, and we chased after this, and here we are with someone that has created or, or done things, supposedly, we actually use the word supposedly at the moment, atrocities around the world. Has he? And whilst being in this country. Has he? Um, well, Benjamin well, Ward. Well, I mean, again, I think the difficulty is, look, he may well have done, um, but if that's the case, why has he not been prosecuted in the UK? And I, I think, think the answer to that is up. that they would rather get, that the British government would find it more convenient to get rid of him. Well, actually, yeah, that's why the, the case has dragged on for as long as it has. You see, Stephen, you say you're, you're extolling the virtues hmm. of the English Defence League and you're saying that uh, you don't care if he's... Uh, <laughs> you have a problem with evidence being obtained by torture. You're well, going against the principles that, no. that great men like Winston Churchill, who you should, as a great English yeah. patriot, be... You should uh, be extolling his virtues. Turkey. You know, uh, pardon me for suggesting yeah. you should extol the virtues of Winston Churchill right. above those of Tommy right. Robinson. Well, Winston Churchill, Nick, he was the first... Or, or, or spoke out against the problems of Islamic extremism. If you knew your history, which I'm sure you do, Winston Churchill did speak out against the dangers of Islamic extremism. The fact is, Nick, and he fought for the ending of says, torture as well. Whatever, whatever Benjamin says, tapes of his sermons were found in the flat in Hamburg belonging to Mohammed Atta. Uh, it's a fact that he has funded and has been. He was found with, with, with loads of money on him uh, and a special envelope marked for, for Mujahideen in Chechnya. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think what we should do is just put him on a plane, forget the little fine we're going to get off this pathetic European court. You've Slough. got a lot of evidence against him. Let's bring George in here in Slough. George, what do you want to say? Well, I want to say I'm very concerned about the casual attitude that's being taken to the principle of habeas corpus. In, oh, here we go. Here we go. Well, we... <laughs> we have a principle. Another one uses semantics of law, not. Well, no, it's, no, it's not semantics of law. It's this ba basic element of English traditions. You should be fighting for it if you're English defence. English defence league, defence English traditions. Let's hear from George. The EDL should be standing. The EDL should be standing up for this, as, as should all British people, because it's a principle that you can't just be thrown into a cell. Um, and left there, you should either be charged with a crime or set free. You should either be brought to court yeah. or let go. And for too many people, whether it's Abu Qatada or Gary McKinnon or the, or the brother-in-law of the chap on you had before the news, 
we should stop just leaving people to rot in jail and we should either charge them or let them go. And there's been a very, very casual attitude to the, to the ancient and established principle of uh, habeas corpus. And if, you know, I'm sure, the, sure all the callers would agree, we need to do something about this guy. He either needs to be charged or let go. Well, when he was Most questioned in 2001 over his alleged connections to this German terror cell, as is pointed, has been pointed out, £170,000 in cash Whoa. in his home, 805 quid in an envelope for the Mujahideen. Why, why were no charges? Benjamin Ward, did they miss the bus here? No, the, 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 Benjamin Ward. In 2000, at, in, at the end of 2001, Parliament passed a law that allowed foreign terrorism suspects to be indefinitely detained without charge. And it's obviously a lot easier to indefinitely detain someone on the say-so of the Home Secretary than it is to actually assemble a case. Because of inadmissible evidence and incriminating uh, uh, intelligence. <clears throat> yes, and then by operatives. the time, by the time uh, that, that that law was, was ruled, uh, was struck out in, in 2005, you know, that they, they, they then moved to the idea of getting rid of him. So I think that there was a missed opportunity uh, in 2001, when exactly when that arrest was made, to, uh, to 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 put the evidence together, but I think it's not too late. The the the, the Jordanians apparently have evidence. I'm sure the security services have evidence to uh, to, to to put him on trial here, where he can get a fair trial. Mm. Yeah. Nikki, can I say one, one George, other George, yes, George, George, please come back, yeah. No. Well, we've had a casual attitude to habeas corpus. We also have a, quite a casual attitude to the European Court of Human Rights. I mean, I think one of your callers already said this morning, yesterday's decision wasn't on the European Court of Human Rights. Um, but we've had people in the last 24 hours in, uh, saying we should just ignore the European Court of Human Rights, something that not only we signed up for, but, but Winston Churchill helped set up. But when in, Winston in Churchill set, helped set it up, it wasn't being abused like it is now. I mean, it's well, because it, now. Because it comes out with a decision you don't like, it's being abused. Well, the, 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 the European the Human Rights, when it first started, it was a good idea. But the way it is now being abused by human rights lawyers, like that Benjamin clown you got on, I mean, I just hope that some... Mm. This is what I really feel. If we don't put him on a plane, I just hope some, some rogue criminal... Careful what you uh, say here. Well, Be I very, very careful what you say here, because there right, are there are laws on incitement. I'm just... I'm Don't saying there are laws on incitement. I would take him out. I'm, I'm, I'm saving you from. You take him out where? To the cinema? No, I take him out with a gun. <laughs> if I, someone said me I've got three well, months to live, but someone, and well, I have a gun, this, I would kill him. There are laws. Listen, listen I'm saving you from yourself. There are laws do on me, incitement to violence. People. Goodbye. Goodbye. Benjamin Ward. There's a lot of people who are angry with the so-called yeah, human rights clowns such as yourself. Benjamin. Yes, Ward. I mean, th of course there are. Of course there are. And, and you know, I think. I think. Um, Th these kinds of controversial cases, obviously, are the, are the, are the ones that get a lot of media attention. Um, and, it, and, it, and, of course, it's also hard, I think, sometimes for people to, um, to, to think about why, you know, what appears to be quite abstract...